Good evening. Tonight I'd like to disassemble this carburetor. This carburetor comes out of a 1955 Packard. It had a 352 V8 in it. And this was the working carburetor in that Packard. And we'll go back into that Packard. The way I'd like to rebuild this thing is follow step by step by what the manual says to do. And in order to rebuild a carburetor, you need a rebuild kit. So let's take a look at the rebuild kit. I've unpacked the rebuild kit and what we have is an accelerator pump along with a return spring and a boot for the accelerator pump. So a needle and seat, set of needle and seats, uh, low speed, low fuel circuit speed jets and gaskets, measuring items and gaskets. It looks to be a pretty complete set. I think I'm going to be happy with the rebuild set. The next thing we have is the manual. And this is where we're going from. The service manual fuel and exhaust. On page four, we start with remove the three retaining screws and retainers from the choke coil cover. Remove the cover and gasket and pick the baffled out of the choke housing. Before we do that, let's remove these items because they're not included in the manual. Now, what they're talking about are these three screws and the little clips that are underneath the screws. And if you've got a good screwdriver, now's the time to break it out so you don't round off these screws. This carburetor has been apart probably several times, including the time that I've taken it apart. I've already had it apart. And I can tell because all the screw heads are rounded over. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so there's the three screws and the three retainers. We'll remove the choke. Gasket. And the baffle plate. The vacuum piston and choke valve shaft are removed as an assembly. To remove this assembly, first remove the choke trip lever retaining screw and slip the trip lever and choke lever and collar assembly off the end of the choke valve shaft. I'll show you what they're talking about. This screw right here is the screw they're talking about. And what you do is you just unscrew that. This is the screw that's in the choke shaft. Okay. Where did the lever go? There it is. Then remove the choke valve screws and slip the valve out of the slot in the shaft. These are the screws they're talking about. They're the screws that holds the choke valve to the choke valve shaft. Now we took the screw out of the end, we're going to take the screws out of this choke valve and then we're going to be able to slide the shaft out of the carburetor. If you have a, a good set of screwdrivers, now is the time to drag it out because these screws, they're, I think they're made of brass and you don't want to strip them. And you find you got to put a lot of pressure on them and make sure that you don't round it off and the screw comes out. And 
again, this carburetor has been apart before. So, I mean, I have taken this carburetor apart before, but what I'm referring to is the damage that's been done to the screw heads here. I just don't want to do any more. Next step. Rotate the shaft counterclockwise and slip the piston out of the bore in the housing. Then remove the shaft and the piston assembly from the air horn. With the screws for the choke valve removed, I can now remove the choke valve itself. So this is the end of the shaft here and the piston is in this bore right here. And what they want you to do is rotate the shaft counterclockwise far enough for that piston to pop, fall out and then we can pull the shaft out of the carburetor. If necessary to remove the housing, remove the two screws from inside the housing and remove the housing and the gasket from the air horn. There's two screws down here. Unsnap the accelerator pump rod retaining clip. The accelerator rod retaining clip is kind of a neat piece of engineering. It's a clip that holds both the rod and onto the lever. Anyway, let me show you. This is the accelerator pump lever and the accelerator pump rod linkage. And this is the clip. And all you do is you push these two little fingers off and it allows the rod to come off and the clip to come off. So whatever you do, don't lose the clip. If I were you, what I would do is put it right back on the rod so it's there when you go to reassemble it. Like so. It's out of your way. Remove the screws shown in figure 9. Note that there is a screw located in the end of the dividing wall. Then lift the air horn assembly off the main body. All right, here we go. We have one, two, three. This one is buried in this bore here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen screws we got to remove here. If you find a screw that's got a tag underneath it, save it. There's lock washers underneath these screws, so don't lose them. Lift the air horn up. Remove the float hinge pin and remove the float assembly from the air horn. Remove the needle seats, gaskets, and strainers. Do not mix the float needles and seats. Float needles and seats are matched. What we have here is the air horn turned upside down with the float assembly. And what they're talking about the hinge pins is there's a little shaft right here at the back of the float that's held in place when it's in the carburetor by the little, bear, the little well that it sits into. So as so long as it's sitting in that well, that shaft can't come out. What they want you to do is to remove that hinge pin and remove the float assembly. The needle, the needle is going to be attached to the float assembly. And they want you to keep this matched as pairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on the 
pan here the locations where they came from. There's a power valve right there. So I know that this one was next to the power valve. So power valve. That way I can put them back in the same location. So let's take the seats out. What you want is a screwdriver large enough to bridge all the way across. And don't skimp. So there's a float and a fiber gasket. I wish you could smell this. This uh, it's got it had really old gas in it, and it was it evaporated. It's all inside the carburetor. So here's the other seat. In the wells that we took the seats out are little strainers. Remove the air horn gasket. Before I remove the air horn gasket, what I want to do is make sure that the gasket supplied in the kit fits. So that's not right. That looks a little better. It's still not right. And there we go. All the holes are got holes. Okay, the reason you want to do that is because when you take the old gasket off, you probably pretty much cross the bridge because it's broken. So now I know I have a good gasket to put in its place and I have to be sure to clean these surfaces. To remove the power piston and the activating spring assembly, Remove the stake metal at the edge of the retainer and lift the assembly from the air horn. I'm not going to do that. I'll show you what they're talking about though. This is what they mean by staked. If you see those two little notches right there, and there's another notch right there, that's actually deform the, the well that that piston is in so that the piston doesn't come out. And what they want you to do is remove that. And I'm not quite sure how to do that. So I'm going to leave well enough alone. Next step. To remove the pump plunger, remove the clip which retains the pump plunger rod to the activating lever. Slip the rubber seal out of the air horn and remove the plunger from the air horn. Slip the rubber seal off the plunger rod. So let's do that. So this is what they're talking about. This is the accelerator pump lever. And this is the accelerator pump. And right here there's a little clip. Now these clips are meant to be bent in place and hold the uh, rod there. Um, I have new ones in the rebuild kit, so I'm just going to carefully bend this out. And if you don't have them in your rebuild kit, you can save these things. What you can get, you can get two screwdrivers and pose the blades. and pry you can probably get enough where you can get that clip off and 
And now the plunger comes out and we stuff the boot down through the carburetor. We have the accelerator pump out and we got the boot off the accelerator pump. To remove the spring from the plunger, compress the spring and plain washer. Slip the retainer off the groove in the rod and slip the spring off the rod. Uh, we're not going to do that because I got a brand new assembly in the rebuild kit. Main body, which means we've completed with the air horn. Remove the accelerating pump return spring. Carefully invert the main body and remove the aluminum accelerator pump inlet ball check from the pump well. Okay, we'll do that. So they want us to remove they want us to remove the accelerator pump return spring. There we go. And then to carefully invert the body and get the little aluminum ball. I don't know if you can see it. It's just if I go like this, it's probably going to roll off the palm of my hand. I'm going to read an entire paragraph of, of directions here. and it, it probably won't make a whole lot of sense, but it, it will when I show it to you on the carburetor. So, remove the three screws from the Venturi cluster on the primary side of the carburetor. Then carefully lift the cluster out of the body and remove the gasket. The venturi cluster on the secondary side is removed in the same manner. The venturi clusters carry the idle tubes and the main nozzles. The primary side cluster also contains the pump discharge nozzles and therefore must always be installed on the primary side. The clusters are serviced only as assemblies. So let's go look and see what they're talking about. This is the primary side of the carburetor. And you can identify the primary side of the carburetor by the location of the accelerator pump well. The accelerator pump well is located next to the primary side. And the primary venturi cluster is different from the secondary venturi cluster by having this additional jet for the uh, accelerator pump. The secondaries don't have that. So therefore you can only put the primary in the primary position and the secondary in the secondary position. Let's take it apart. So there is the primary cluster and the gasket. And the secondary, secondary cluster and its gasket. The pump discharge ball check and spring located under the cluster, and we're talking about the primary cluster, are retained by the flat guide. So what we have to go to is go in there with a pair of pliers and pull this flat guide out so that we can get the spring out. So here's the flat guide right here. This is where the primary cluster goes. And here's the flat guide. And take a pair of pliers and pull it out. Now I've pulled it out mostly. It's a little more difficult than that, but that's what you do. Down inside is a spring. And I'm going to bet there's, there's a ball down in there. And there sure is. Another ball. Remove the main metering jets from both sides of the carburetor. The jets used on the secondary side are larger than those on the primary side. So don't mix them up. These are the jets they're talking about. Down inside the carburetor. Right there. Are 
two sets of jets and there's an identical set of jets on the back side of the carburetor. The ones on the primary side, which are the ones we're looking at, because you can see the power valve in front, are smaller than the ones on the secondary side. So let's take those out. We're going to remove the primary jets first. That's one. That's two. And I think we'll make a nice little diagram of where they came from. Here's the carburetor body. Here's the accelerator pump. So this is the primary size for those jets. Now let's take the secondary side out. Next step, with a screwdriver, depress the power valve plunger and remove the power valve and fiber gasket. This is the power valve right here. And what they want you to do is to press that little needle valve in the center with a screwdriver so that you can get it on the valve and take the valve out. There we go. Power valve and fiber gasket. Throttle body. Invert the carburetor. Remove the three small screws and one large screw. Lift the throttle body off the main body and carefully remove the throttle body gasket. Let's do that. These are the three screws they're talking about and the big screw in the center. So we have the throttle body, the gasket, and the main body. Remove the idle adjustment screws and springs. Uh, before I remove these, I found what they were set at by screwing them in very gently and seating them. And they were both seated at one and one quarter turns. So that's what we'll start uh, with as an initial setting when we put it back together. I'm running out of space here. Now I'm going to read a bunch of instructions and then I'm going to do it a little bit differently because I don't want to lose all the linkages on the end. They, what they want you to do is disassemble all the linkages uh, to get to the uh, um, throttle valves. And what I'm going to do is try to slide the whole, all, both shafts out at the same time so we don't lose the linkages. But here's, here's what the book says to do. Remove the fast idle cam screw and remove the cam and rod. Remove the retainers from the secondary throttle lever link and slip the link out of the throttle levers. Mark the valves of both the primary and the secondary throttles to identify their location. Remove the secondary throttle valve screws Remove the valves, then slip the throttle shaft lever assembly out of the body and remove the retaining spring. Remove the primary throttle valves, screws, and remove the valves. 
slide the throttle out, uh, slide the throttle and lever assembly out of the body and remove the secondary activating lever and spring assembly from the shaft. What we're going to do is do this a little bit different than what the book said. I'm going to remove all the throttle valve uh, screws out and pull the veins, the valves themselves out and see if I can't slide all this linkages out as one assembly. But first I got to identify each one of these uh, valves. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. All right. Now that we have all the screws out, we can remove the valves themselves and they're marked. So we can put them back in the same order. And now what I want to do is I want to move, remove these well, I got to take this one linkage off. I do have to remove this one uh, uh, screw that retains the accelerator pump lever. And now what I'd like to be able to do is to slide these shafts out together rather than disassembling all that linkage there. That's different th from what the um, manual says. Well there's nothing left to disassemble. That's what I wanted to get done. I didn't get it done in a night. Filming takes time. Uh, the next step is inspection and cleaning and reassembly. This video is probably going to be about 15 minutes long as it is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one video and I'll make the next uh, video the reassembly and that'll be an even longer video because we've got to do all the measurements. There'll be more.